We've dedicated a lot of time on this channel talking about the two main GPU heavy hitters. We've got NVIDIA on the green side, we've got AMD on the red side, and when you put them together, what does red and green make? That's a color that I'm not exactly familiar with. What is it? All right, well, no. Okay, so apparently red and green, or green and red, mix them together, what do you get? You get a duopoly situation where it's not even a real duopoly because these all people have the power and then they make the GPP happen and then they have a red team. So. The good thing is that AMD and uh, NVIDIA might actually be getting some competition in the form of Intel. In case you haven't heard, AMD's big top daddy Vega producer, Raja Kadori, left AMD to go work for Intel uh, a few months ago. And during that time, what did they do? They brought Vega to Intel little chips. We got we got in mobile Vega with Intel. Like it's it's a, like pigs are flying. Hell is freezing over. Dead people are rising from their graves because the, the, the red red and blue are working together in a way that's not necessarily unprecedented. It's definitely happened in the past, but in a way that's unprecedented in recent history. However, that assumption or that acquiring of Raja Kadori doesn't appear to be just so that they can be working on things together, but so that Intel can move forward in a way that they feel fit for their uh, company's future because, I mean, they basically have the CPU market at this point, even if Ryzen 2, when it, you know all those reviews come out, pr prove to be actually any good, Intel is still pretty good at keeping the top level CPU performance. I mean, there's the 8900K, 9700K, or whatever that's coming out, but then we're also expect, I mean, the 7980XE is just a monster of a, of a CPU, and you look at the 7960X versus the Threadripper, the 7960X stomps all over a Threadripper just competes on value. Anyways, my point is Intel holds a lot of performance crowns when it comes to CPUs, and now it appears that they want to get into the GPU market. But before we get into the article and meat and potatoes of this video, I want to remind you guys that we do have the UFD Tech Podcast so that you guys can listen with your audio follicles so that you can keep up to date with everything that's going on. If you don't have time to watch these videos, check out the podcast. You can listen on over there. You can get those ear stimulations that uh, you might you might not get to see my pretty mug. You might not get to see the wavy fingers and the wagon tails, but you get to hear this lovely sultry voice in a hotel bathroom with tons of echo. It's going to be good for you. But so it just, this is just for everybody who's communicated that they can't keep up with all of the videos we're releasing. So we put it on audio form because you can, you know, listen to that while you're walking the dog and you don't have to watch anything. Anyways, that's going to be good. And then also don't forget to subscribe to UFD deals, which is our daily tech deals video. We scour the web for the best deals on tech so that you guys can save a little bit of money. Yeah. Subscribe to that down there or over there. That'd be great. Moving on back to the article. Now, we have from this is from hexis.net. This is Intel working on Arctic Sound discrete GPU for gamers. Now, the first part of that title sentence, Intel working on Arctic Sound discrete GPU, is nothing new. We've heard of this before. Arctic Sound is supposed to be coming out. However, the for gamers part is the interesting tidbit. So back in November of last year, Hexus delivered the exclusive news that Raja Kadori was leaving AMD. Later then, we found out Kadori was actually going to Intel and blah, blah, blah. So it looks like Kadori has already had a considerable impact to Intel and is looking to redefine the Arctic Sound discrete GPU to be powerful enough for gaming. This is a tweet that says, apparently Roger Kadori is redefining Arctic Sound. First, Intel DGPU was originally tar targeted for video streaming apps in data centers, but now being split in two. The video streaming stuff and gaming apparently wants to enter the market with a bang because that's what happens when Intel enters anywhere. It goes bang and the competition dies because they do anti-competitive things anyways, not the point. So such a move would be a canny strategy for Intel as PC GPUs are in short supply, cryptocurrency mining. So they're unavailable at re recommended retail prices due to the mining trend. So the last time Intel dipped their toes with the discrete GPU was an AGP card i740, which sounds like a processor that they should have had. However, according to the source, we'll have to wait for quite a number of months before the Arctic Sound hits prime time. A 2020 launch is on the cards for what will be Intel's 12th generation graphics architecture. So it took the Intel 12 years to get to the point where they think that they can compete with AMD and Nvidia, which when plenty of people say, why can't they just have another third company that comes in so we can have some choices between AMD and Nvidia because I'm tired of paying more than 400 
dollars more than MSRP because there's only two choices. I hate the duopoly situation. Well, if a giant company like Intel takes so long to develop their GPU architecture that it takes them 12 generations to get to the point where they're like, oh yeah, maybe we can compete on this, but only on future setups, it, it takes a considerable amount of resources. So it looks like 2020 is where we're gonna be landing for Arctic Sound discrete graphics cards from Intel, which I mean is plenty of time. I mean, that basically means that they're working on the architecture now, or they already had architecture that they've been working on and they can refine it over the next few years to actually bring it out for gamers. But that means that we're probably looking at like GPU architecture that we don't even know of because Nvidia's roadmap ended at Volta. We have no idea what's coming after Volta, which is why Ampere and Turing are the latest rumors that are just flying out because nobody knows what's supposed to be coming next. We've had Pascal for two years. Volta has been in the high end AI deep learning sector, but then for gaming, we've only had Pascal. We don't know what comes next. Volta was the last thing on the roadmap. So we're, we're anticipating Turing and Ampere are coming out, but then it's also kind of the same thing. Well, okay, let me get back to the point with Nvidia. So Ampere and Turing, they're releasing in 2018. By 2020, we're, we should be on another architecture altogether. Like Volta should be phased out, Pascal, and then Ampere and Turing should be phased out. So we should be on a second generation past what even we have now. And then it's also the same or similar idea with AMD. Right now we are on Vega, which is going to be the current generation. It is the current generation. Supposedly what we're getting with the RX 600 series, which is what I talked about in the video this morning, we're supposed to be getting Infinity Fabric and all of that kind of goodness on the GPU side. So we have Vega now, then Navi is supposed to launch 2019, but then 2020 is when we're supposed to get in the post GCN era, which is the current architecture that AMD uses for the graphics cards. We're supposed to be getting our first set of GPUs past that, that different instruction set that's supposedly gonna make it amazing and phenomenal balls. So that's what we're anticipating for 2019. 2020 is what's past Navi. We're getting seven nanometer plus. We're getting GPUs that we don't even know about yet. So we're looking at generational leaps that Intel is going to have to make to even enter into the competition, which is a huge problem if you look at what Intel is delivering on right now. If you look at the, what they have on the consumer market with the UHD 630, it's absolutely absolute crap. If you look at the Iris Pro graphics, they're okay, but nowhere near a dedicated level graphics card. So for them to take the generational leap from a crappy, you know, iGPU to something that can compete with the big dogs years down the line, I mean, we're talking about maybe 8K 60 FPS gaming. If you assume that 4K 60 FPS is the standard with Pascal at 1080 Ti, 1180 Ti would probably be 8K 30. And then following that would probably be 8K 60 FPS. So that's what we're looking at for Intel GPUs is an 8K 60 FPS gaming thing or maybe 4K 144 Hertz. Although we should, like that's the interesting thing about what Nvidia has been teasing. Teasing They did the BFGD at CES, which is the 4K 120 Hertz 65 inch TVs, but they don't have anything that can drive that. And they're trying to kill off SLI. So are they trying to insinuate that their single GPUs are gonna be able to do it this year? Maybe we're looking at 4K 200 Hertz gaming in 2020. I don't know, 4K 2020 Hertz gaming. That would be dope. Anyways, the point is that we're looking at generational improvements down the line that maybe Intel is that we'll have to bring to the table, which I guess is why Intel has brought on Raja Kadori. And then they've also bogarted somebody by the name of Chris Hook, which isn't exactly, um, you know, it's not exactly confirmed at this point because Chris Hook, so senior director of global product marketing from AMD has left it after a 17 year tenure of being with uh, the company since ATI. So AMD acquired ATI and he's been with them before that, that uh, merger and acquisition. And so he left AMD with a statement on Facebook saying that they've been a great company to work for, most rewarding experience, blah, 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 and that he will fill us in on his upcoming opportunity in the next coming days and weeks with the obvious indication being that he is going to Intel. So Raja Kadori, Chris Hook being on the Intel side, maybe on an engineering level, they're gonna be able to do it and actually pull it off. I personally have very little hope for the entire situation because if you look at what Vega was after the years of development that Raja Kadori poured into Vega and then what it came out to be was just super disheartening. And you can argue with me all you want about how good Vega actually is. It's not that good for how long they took to actually produce it. It wasn't supposed to come out when it did. It was supposed to come out 18 months earlier or roughly about that point, maybe 12 months earlier. It was supposed to come out way earlier than it actually did. And what it came out was undercooked and over, uh, 
oversalted. And so color, color me skeptical about Razer Kidori's ability to actually deliver on GPUs that would be able to do this, but I'm kind of hoping that it, Intel can enter the market because it, it's true. Like we're at a point where it's a duopoly situation. There's nothing we can do. This is why Nvidia can institute the GPP and there's nobody there to fight back, which then if Intel gets into the lineup, they actually have the resources to fight Nvidia on that kind of crap. So does Asus, but they chose not to. That's a different point for another time, my friends. But getting Intel into the lineup with powerful graphics cards that can compete with AMD and Nvidia down the road is something that I would salivate at and something that I definitely want to happen but I want to know what you guys think are you looking forward to this transition that AMD uh, Intel might be making to being in the gaming sector of GPUs what other company do you would you want to actually come into the GPU market maybe Samsung maybe Qualcomm I Qual that would be a huge jump for Qualcomm to do it like what other companies do you think that could compete with AMD and Nvidia in this space let me know down in the community discord which is one of the links in the video description or down in the comments below let's chat down there be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content and last video from a hotel for quite some time my friends you have stuck with me on this I was going to say perilous, but really enjoyable road trip that I've been taking across the United States. We went from Florida to Florida to Florida to Florida to Florida to Florida to Texas to Texas to Alabama to Florida to Florida to Florida to Florida to DC to Tennessee, South Carolina to Georgia to Florida to Florida to Florida to Florida. It's, it's almost over, my friends. It's almost over. South Africa is calling my name. I can't wait to be back. And I thank you guys so much for sticking. This is not the ideal situation. This is not how I want to be producing videos. Um, but I thank you guys so much for having the grace, grace and mercy upon us to actually continue to subscribe, to watch the videos and just stick with us on this crazy, crazy tour that it's been. Yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I'm going to see you in the next video. Cheers.